You're watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. Thanks so much for joining us today. You are about to receive a fresh word of insight and truth that will take your life to the next level of growth and victory. Be blessed and enjoy. God bless you. Welcome to Connection TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that you've taken time out of your schedule to watch and to every person who views every week, whether it's online or on television, we're grateful for your feedback, your support, your gifts of kindness, your prayers. It makes all of the difference in the world to us. And we're appreciative of your uh, continual viewership and support of this ministry. I'm also grateful to let each person that is viewing know that you can go to connectiontv.net and you can um, message us your prayer requests there. You can give donations there, but you can also download the teaching notes uh, from every single teaching. We had a lot of requests for the notes from our teaching. So guess what? You can download them and um, just click the button that says teaching notes and you can print them out and you can follow along with us. Isn't that awesome? Um, also, I want you to know that if you need prayer, call that number on the screen, 773-471-3370, and we will pray with you as we move further in this awesome teaching series on the force of focus, the force of focus. And we've been talking about uh, various things such as capturing our thoughts. And then the last teaching was on sticking to the game plan that God gives you. And today I'm excited about teaching from the theme of don't even go there. You know, you've told someone that before, don't even go there. Have you said that? Maybe you said it today, don't even go there. We're gonna dig into that in just a moment. Let's pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you for your word that is alive. It's powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. I pray that you would do surgery in our hearts and transform our minds through the taught word. I pray for salvation and healing and deliverance to manifest in our lives in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, you heard it right. Don't even go there. That is a, uh, a popular phrase that refers to not going in a certain direction in conversation or in behavior or whatnot. Well, the scripture talks a lot about don't even go there. Look with me into Pro, uh, to the book of Proverbs chapter four, Proverbs chapter four, and we're going to, going to begin at verse 13. Proverbs 4, 13 says, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not into the way of evil men, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. In other words, get a grip on instruction, cleave to it and avoid the path of the wicked, pass by it, detour around it, but don't go in the path of the wicked. Now, verse 18 of the same chapter, Proverbs 4, 18 says, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. But the way of the wicked is as darkness and they know not at what they stumble. So it's contrasting walking in the light of God's word to walking in the darkness of disobedience and error. Walking in the light of God's word, you walk, the more you walk, you walk into the brilliance and the glorious illumination of his will. But if you walk in darkness, you stumble and know not at which you stumble because there's no clarity or discernment. So it's important for us to operate with clarity and or focus in our daily lives. You must be focused. Focus is centering your attention on what matters, particularly in this context, the will of God and the plan that he has for you. Now, look with me to verse um, 25 and 27 of Proverbs, Proverbs 4, verse 25, 26, and 27. It says, let thine eyes look right on and thy eyelids look straight before thee. In other words, put on blinders. You know, oftentimes horses would have on blinders, but also in certain work vocations, people wear blinders to protect their eyes or to stay focused. Verse 26 says, ponder or think on the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. In other words, know where you're going before you start. That's something that I would always say to my children. I say to young people, just don't loiter and hang out. 
the loiterers are oftentimes losers because they're, they are uh, drawn in to things that they never anticipated. Just don't loiter and hang out. Don't just be aimless. No, let your pathway be clear, but also let your steps be established. Your pathway be established or pre-planned. Know where you're going and get there. Now, verse 27 says, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Turn not. Don't take a right or take a left. This is referring to focus. Now, this teaching is significant because focus is a skill that can be developed. It's, it's a spiritual skill. It's, it's to center your attention on the right thing, or it's really to look at a central point. And so the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, empowers you to focus. Do you know that distractions and deviations is one of the ways that Satan keeps us from God's best? He'll get us to focus on the things that don't matter, so we will neglect the things that really matter. He will get us to focus on small things. You know, praise is a type of focus. It's focusing on who God is and not on what you're facing. So when you can say, his praise shall continually be in my mouth, I will bless him at all times. That's focusing on who he is and not on perhaps your physical condition or what's going on in your body or what's going on in your finance. Praise is a type of focus. Remember Jesus said, don't focus on the little speck in one person's eye and overlook the beam in your own eye. He was talking about focusing on the right things. You know, to be successful in God, you must resist the temptation that Satan would bring to attempt to allure you from the perfect path that he has for you. Remember, Proverbs 4.27 says, turn not to the right hand or to the left, remove your foot from evil. In other words, don't deviate from the course. And so there are things that require focus in our lives. There are assignments that require focus. There are jobs, there are tasks, there are goals that require focus. Maybe your goal is to be debt free or it's to build up your credit score. It's to uh, purchase a home. Perhaps it's to have a successful, joyful marriage. Maybe you're, you've been focusing on and your, your goal has been to uh, have a strong uh, company that you're building. Maybe it's to have a good relationship with your children or with your parents. Maybe your goal is to, be, is, to, is to build a strong ministry in church and you're just planting the church and you want it to be strong and healthy and balanced. Whatever your goal is, it's going to require focus. And being anointed or chosen for a particular task does not exempt you from the temptations that Satan will bring to get you off course. And so as I move into this teaching, I am going to show you various instances where there are powerful uh, people that God used in a great way, how they had to maintain their focus. They had to center their attention. They had to control their thoughts so their actions will be compliant with their godly thinking. Your actions will only align when you are in a godly mindset. So you can say, oh, God, keep me from this or keep me from that. I don't want to deviate. But if you're not thinking on the right things, I promise you, you will give in. And so Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And remember, how you think will dictate what manifests and what evidence is itself in your life. So we're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to have to set your eyes on the prize. Remember Hebrews chapter 12 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God. Wow, he had to endure difficulty to get to that goal of being the resurrected Lord and the conqueror of sin and death in the flesh. It took hard work. It took focus. Maybe you've been out of focus. Maybe you've been taking every right and every left. Instead of driving through the intersection, you have taken the scenic route so much that you don't even know where you are. Well, guess what? 
You're going to get back on point. And you're not even going to go there anymore. You're going to walk into the perfect path that God has for you. Stay connected. We'll be right back after this message. Focus is the difference between success and failure, peace and confusion, as well as wealth and poverty. In this month's four-part DVD series, you will learn key principles on how to capture your thoughts, how to avoid distractions, and so much more. Order your series today at ConnectionTV.net or call 773-471-3370 and be blessed. Hi, friend. For over 25 years, Operation Linkup has been making a difference in the lives of teenagers in the city of Chicago, Illinois. We emphasize three things, mentoring, motivation, and mobilization. Will you take a moment and think about how your prayer and your support can help us continue helping them? Take a moment and watch this. We've seen a mother who lost her son. We've heard strategy on how to connect with bully teenagers. We've also been equipped with insight on how to teach our youth how to war and take authority spiritually. Operation Link Up is a teen program that holistically empowers teens to excel. Since 1996, Operation Link Up has been mentoring, motivating, and mobilizing youth between the ages of 12 to 18 years old in Chicago, Illinois. Through our weekly empowerment programs, teens are equipped to have good character, excel academically, master the performing and martial arts, learn audio and visual production, as well as be positive community shareholders. In spite of the hopelessness and discouragement among today's teens, Operation Link Up continues to shine bright and make a difference. We ask you to stand with us that we may continue to empower this generation. Your prayers and monthly financial gifts will enable us to expand our outreach efforts and services to teenagers on the southwest side of Chicago. Will you stand with us today by giving a special gift toward the mission of Operation Link Up? Your one-time gift or a monthly gift of $25 will enable us to continue to impact teens in a relevant way each week. Together, we can make a difference and reach this generation. Please go to ConnectionTV.net today and click on Operation Link Up to give your financial gift toward this vision. Or you may mail your gift of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437-740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thanks so much for standing with Operation Link Up as we empower today's teenagers to excel. Your support is so vital as we strive to reach many of the hurting and hopeless teenagers of Chicago. We say at Operation Link Up, before you send them to jail or send them to hell, send them to us and we can, we can make a difference. So will you pray about giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift of support to Operation Link Up? It will be so very appreciated and it will help us accomplish our goal of reaching teenagers one youth at a time. Thank you so much for your consideration and continue to pray for us and we will continue to reach our teenagers. Together, we can make a difference. God bless you. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. We're talking about don't even go there. The importance of maintaining focus that you may fulfill your spiritual goals, your domestic goals, your financial goals, and every other goal that you, perhaps you have. I know that you have many goals, but understand that anything that is good and godly, Satan would try to distract you from it. So we, in the first segment, I alluded to that focus is a skill that must be developed. And if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
And whether you know it or not, walking in the spirit, walking in under the influence of Holy Spirit gives you the power to resist satanic temptation. Now, Ephesians chapter six says that, amen, we are to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the devil, stand against the wiles or strategies of the devil. My mind goes back to Joseph in the scriptures. Joseph was the son of Jacob, a young visionary and dreamer that was betrayed by his brothers and sold into slavery. And he ended up in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar had an attractive wife who was attractive, attracted to Joseph. And in Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 through 12, we see that she began to attempt to seduce Joseph. The scripture says that she looked at Joseph and she said, lie with me. I, I want to have sex with you. Now, she was a married woman, which would have made that an act of adultery. But the Bible says in verse 8 that Joseph refused. He refused to give in. He said this. He said, my master does not even know what's going on with me. He's entrusted so much to me. He says he's kept nothing back from me. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That's what Joseph said when Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce him. Understand that it does not matter how gifted you are, how hard you work, how committed you are to the course that God has. Satan will always attempt to distract you and allure you from the course. But you have to say, don't even go there. I'm not even going there, Satan. You see, seducing spirits are real. Potiphar's wife had a seducing spirit. And perhaps there's been a seducing spirit trying to come around you to seduce you, that you may be induced to a certain action or something that could be harmful or hurtful or destructive to your destiny. Understand how oftentimes seducing spirits work. When you're on the perfect pathway, walking in the way in the will of God, the enemy will try to show you something that piques your curiosity. And if your curiosity is piqued, then you'll make inquisition or ask or go in the direction of what he has attempted to allure you to. You see, when I first started driving, one of the things that I was told is that the car will follow your eyes. And I learned early on, I would keep my hand in the 10 and the two position and keep my eyes on the road. I remember my driver's education teacher telling me that years ago. He said, if you look to the right, I promise you, you're, the car is going to go to the right. Look straight ahead. And that's still a good practice today when you're driving. Look straight ahead. Don't be seduced. There are sometimes lust spirits and spirit of, spirits of perversion that people operate in to seduce you. Joseph did not fall for the seduction. The Bible says that he was more committed to pleasing God than pleasing Potiphar's wife to the point that she grabbed him and he ran from her and left his coat in her hand. But what's powerful is this. He left his coat, but he kept his integrity. He kept his honorable walk with God, which later resulted in him being promoted. He went to prison for this false accusation of rape that Potiphar's wife espoused, and he was thrown into the Egyptian prison. But you know, years later, he ascended to second in command in Egypt because of his integrity. He stayed focused. He continued to interpret dreams, and God continued to raise him up. That's an example of how you have to stay focused on what God has ahead of you. Now, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 19. Many of you know the story of Nehemiah. He had a burden to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And the Bible says that he had to go through multiple distractions from his enemies as he persisted in his quest to rebuild the walls. I mean, his enemies began to come at him once he started having success. And let me say this to you. Sometimes your greatest test is not when you are perceived as a failure, it's when you're perceived as a success. And then the attention comes, but also the temptation or the um, tempter's power will be most uh, pronounced toward you to get you out of the will of God. Nehemiah was ridiculed 
and made fun of, but he kept building the wall. In Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, Nehemiah's enemy, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem said, come and let us meet together. I am doing, it. they would say, let us meet together. We want to talk with you about what you're doing. But Nehemiah said, I am doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I talk to you? Nehemiah would not meet with his distractors. Maybe you've met with people who you shouldn't have met with before. In this new season, don't converse with everyone. Only converse with those who understand your calling and keep moving in the direction of your destiny. You must discern meetings. Oh, wow, that's a loaded statement because every meeting is not for your good. You can end up getting out of the will of God, conversing and articulating God's instruction to you, to people who don't even understand or support God's plan for you. If you're talking about getting out of debt, don't have a conversation with a person who has no of spending discipline. If you're talking about having a healthy marriage, don't have a conversation with a person who is an adulterer or an adulteress or who has a wandering eye. I think you know what I'm saying. If you're talking about being used by God in ministry, don't have a conversation with the person who's never even said yes to God, not to even mention saying yes to the ministry calling that God perhaps will have on their life. Don't stand in the counsel of the ungodly. Why should your work cease when you come down to talk with people who don't understand what God has called you to do anyway? Sometimes it's a lonely walk. Nehemiah had to keep walking. Verse 5 through 7 of Nehemiah chapter 6, there was an open letter that was circulated in and around Jerusalem, and it was reported among the heathen that you want to set up your own nation. And they said, let us take counsel together and talk with you, Nehemiah. In this context, Nehemiah's reputation and character was attacked by gossip rumor and hearsay. Let me give you a word of wisdom. But when people gossip or tear down what God has called you to do, don't be distracted. You must say, don't even go there. I'm going to keep doing the work of God and may the work speak for me. Because Satan will plot and try to pull builders away from great assignments. Now, even in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 10 through 13, they came again. These enemies came unto Nehemiah and said, let us meet together in the house of God. And Nehemiah says, I perceive that God had not sent him. Tobiah and Sanballat had sent and hired a false prophet that they might do me evil or produce an evil report. So there was a guy by the name of Shemaiah that came to Nehemiah with a false prophecy imploring Nehemiah to hide in the temple for his own safety, but it was ultimately to get him away from building the wall. Nehemiah discerned deception and he did not bite the bait. He didn't even go there. You see, Nehemiah epitomizes the fight for focus. Although there were multiple distractions that came his way, he stayed focused on the goal. And the Bible says, 52 days later, in Nehemiah 6.15, the walls were finished. Wow. You see, Nehemiah celebrated for the great work that he did, but you can't celebrate him fully without appreciating how he had to resist the distraction to maintain focus. We celebrate Joseph having that great wisdom to have a feeding plan in the seven years of lack in Egypt. But you can't celebrate that unless you appreciate fully him resisting the temptation to lay with Potiphar's wife. Some of you who are watching right now, you are this close to your breakthrough, but you must maintain your focus. You must look unto Jesus. Don't look to the left or to the right. Don't answer your critics. Don't get into arguments with gossipers and haters because they will drain your energy and cause your faith to waver. Stay focused on what God has called you to do in this season. I want to pray with you right now. Perhaps you started walking with God in the past and you allowed perhaps negative friends or negative family members to draw you away, but Jesus loves you. He wants you to be his child and walk with him. 
If you're watching, you say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Christ. I, I want to focus on him and not on the other stuff around me. I want to be his child. I want to walk with him. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, repeat it after me. Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you and I change my focus from this world to you in Jesus' name. Come into my heart, wash me in your blood, save me, and I'll live for you in Jesus' name. And can you say amen? And say amen again. Welcome to the family of God. I need you to call that number on the screen and tell us that you gave your heart to Christ. And for every person, perhaps you already are born again, I want to say to you, don't even go there. Stay on the path of God's purpose and his will. Now, we love you so much, and I want you to get this four-part series. The announcer will tell you how to get this series of all four of these teachings to have it in your library, that you may have it in your library. Also, go to our website, connectiontv.net, download our notes, or you can call and ask for a copy of the notes to be mailed or emailed to you. We want you to continue to grow in God and understand that there's a force in focus. God will bless you as you continue to walk uprightly before him. Your best is yet to come. Know that I love you, and I can't wait to see you the next time. God bless. Focus is the difference between success and failure, peace and confusion, as well as wealth and poverty. In this month's four-part DVD series, you will learn key principles on how to capture your thoughts, how to avoid distractions, and so much more. Order your series today at ConnectionTV.net or call 773-471-3370 and be blessed. Are you looking for a place to grow and fulfill your spiritual destiny? Then join us at Southside Worship Center. We are located at 7724 South Racine in Chicago, Illinois. We are a vibrant ministry where people care and overcome. You'll receive dynamic teaching and anointed worship along with relevant programs for the children, teenagers, and adults in your family. We have two dynamic services on Sundays at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Word Workout at 7 p.m. Be sure to check us out at sswcchicago.org or on Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for watching Connection TV with Pastor Titus Lee. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged by today's teaching. We know that God has great things for you and your best days are ahead of you. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to visit our website, which is connectiontv.net. While on our site, you may listen to a message, explore our teaching archive, sign up for our newsletter, give an offering of financial support, or request prayer for any need that you may have. You may also call us at 773-471-3370 for prayer needs or to request our message of the month. Please mail your letters and gifts of support to Connection TV, P.O. Box 437740, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. We look forward to sharing with you again. Until then, let's stay connected.